Hi everyone and welcome back. And uh, what we're doing this week? Well, we're cracking on with these descent tiles. Um, I've got a bit behind with printing stuff and other things. So I thought, right, let's get these done. And they're quite simple to make, quite cheap to make. Played with a couple of new ideas in the videos, which you'll see. Some I'll still need to fiddle around with and get 100%. But it worked. So let's get to the table and crack on. Right, what have I been up to? So I've cut this tile, which is going to cut a ledge cut down through here. This one will make up the river tile. Straight square to make up this big one here. And then a couple of little ones I've done and textured. Just put a dot in there for the center point. So all I'm using is the broken earth stamp and literally put it on, grab a hammer and I've got nuts. There you go. And then gradually work your way over the whole tile. So, I did think about putting a grid in, but I thought I'll make the grid up of just like a stone or a tuff, because otherwise it just doesn't feel right to me to have a grid going through like a rough area of garden. There you go, so I'll just crack on. Oh, let's put that out of the way. So there's a texture here. Won't really see much of it until it's um, dry brushed up later on. So I'll crack on and get these done. Right, I'm going to get an idea of a grid on here by just marking in some holes. So I've got a set square, set it to an inch, probably go over fractionally, so just loosen it. There we go, tighten that up. So I know there there, 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 put them on the bottom edge, and check it square, same again, and you just work your way up, and you give a rough grid idea, So there's just some dents. Just grab some PVA. Just put a dollop pretty much on these dots. Right, now then I just get some grit. around the blue spots. This is just chip grip. with more Podge anyway and seal it all in. So we have some dots. So we tidy these up with a brush. Just take off some of the excess. They don't need to be too big these dots. Just see roughly right over a grid on the already. That sort of blend into the earth and the, everything else and the flocks. It'll give you a nice looking board. 
Right, we're looking at the garden one, which has got some dead squares, which block line of sight. So you've got three that way, and the corner's not used. So I'm thinking of doing this, I'm just going to cut some off cuts of the XPS. I'm going to stick them in, just to give a centre block. And then we'll blend all that in as an earth sort of thing, before we seal it all down, and continue colouring it up. So literally, I'm just going to stick them down with some PVA. Which way it goes? Um, I'll go that way. Be nice, you could even bring it back to the corner and trim that if you wanted to. Which I think I'll probably be able to do that way. Let's go that way with it. Right, so that's that one in. That one. Square there, so I'll probably take a little bit off of that. Just like so. And that'll do. I can even put a bit of glue in between to make them tack. In you go. That'll do. Just pick it up like that. Don't matter if it's square, whatever, it's just a something to push material against in a minute. So we let that dry. Right, once our support piece are dried on our tile, we're gonna make up a compound using old egg boxes. Let's just rip it into bits. Make like a paper mache sculptor mold material. really know how much we're going to need. And then we're going to grab a cup of really hot water. Probably not pour it over everything because you might want to do it like that. Put the cup up here out the way in a minute. I've got some plaster here to add to it in a minute. Probably have to add more water to just soak in, just give it a little while. If you want to get this to break down. Right, once it's soaked a bit and you keep putting it apart, it's still not small, small, so you could keep going. I'm going to add some PVA. Add some PVA like that. Get that out of the way. Smash that. It's a mix. Still got quite a bit of water in there at the moment, so. bulking up materials. Right, I got rid of a little bit of water. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to rip up some standard tissue in it. It's really cheap stuff. Just to add a bit more bulk to that. I did some paint to the mix, but this didn't really work, so I won't bother. I also added some plaster to the mix to help harden it up. So I'm just adding the sculpture mold with bits of plaster along the little supports we put in. So just wrapping it. Just trying to make this look rough. Uh, pick some pulp, real pulped up stuff to go around the bottom. So we're just continue working our way around, adding bits out of our mix. We're gradually working it on with our fingers. The eggshell pieces, some of them you have to fold down. They bend quite nice and easily because obviously they're wet. And shape it all up. So once we've done that, we will then try and square some of this up. So I'll grab the square uh, palette knife and just square the edges so it looks a bit more like squares. So there you have it. After all our stains and everything are dry, we're going to have a look at our water tile with a little bit of water on the side. So I've just mixed in some PVA water to make it really thin and all I'm going to do is get a piece of cloth, a bit of kitchen towel or a bit of tissue, toilet tissue, just give it a good soak in, do a bit more water on that probably, just that water 
soaking tap. Right, then we've got our tile. Because I'll probably cut this in half actually. That took that one. Start getting our pieces and placing them on, so I'm just creasing them up as I put them on. And gradually build it up all the way along. So there's in ripples, I'm using the end of a brush to push it about. So this just helps get the right waves in and work along the edge. Against the bank, I'll go across it with the bristles of the brush. If you find you need to smooth it a bit more, just wet the brush and work your way along. I think that will do. Let that dry. Right, we are other tiles drying a bit. I'm just going to mix up some more podge and black for doing the rocks we made earlier. I'm going to chip some of these down a little bit as well. Because all they're here for is really to define the grid. And yes, they'll blend out a little bit. But some of them look a bit too far over. So I'll just get rid of them. Right, so I'm going to prep our black and just whack it on. So just work it in. Work it around the bottom. I'm going to do the base tile with brown, or podge and brown paint. So I'm not going to cover the whole tile with this, it's just really to get the rocks. whack her on and I'll do the other one and then we'll come back whack on the brown right now everything's dry we're gonna give this a dry brush I don't think I'll use that. that might be a bit too past it I might do if we ruin these Grab a oh, large dry brush, paint into the bristles, work it out, and just dry my brush. Okay, so that actually makes quite a big difference. I'll grab some cream and haven't even cleaned the brush. I'm just gonna make sure it's quite light this time. There you go, right, I'm going to get the blues. I've grabbed a dark blue, a light blue, add a drop of water, so I'll let it mix in the middle. So where we add our tissue. I'm going to come across the first edge, very dark. So pretty much pure the dark blue. Do the edges with the dark blue. Um, the edges take two coats because of it being exposed to XPS, it soaks the paint up. Then we we'll start working across our dry tissue paper, so dark at the edge, we're moving up to a lighter blue as you approach the bank. Because the paint's nice and thin, you can wet blend it as you work your way up to get a nice transition. This is dried up, so I'm just going to grab some white. Don't need a lot. Right, then work it out. Over 
a little bit. There you go. And then I'm going to try and brush it back. So we let that dry and then give that a gloss coat. Right, once so that's dry, we're just going to grab some more podge gloss. Right, and we'll just let that dry. Right, so while the water one's drying, we'll get on with the other ones. So I've picked up the original tile. So here's the rocks. We took this chunk out with rock. And I'll do put that next to it and grab some PVA. So no, we've got a square there. So it comes to about here. Really whack it on. And it comes out here. So we get into this rock face. Probably want to get right around the rock face anyway. Continue putting on the PVA using our real tile as a reference to get a very similar sort of design to what the original game tiles have. And once this is all on, we can move on to the flocking stage. So I grab some coarse. So we're going to look at the coarse. So we got a lump here. So we just push that together. Got a lump there. One around this tough here. And these stones. Take this going up actually, to be honest, and it into there. Put a lump there. Got a couple of odd lumps along the side here. So there's a bush around here somewhere. Like that. Pretty good to make. Fine to dark, so a bit fine. Just get the fine in against here a little bit, just to give a bit of shadow. Just like that. Mid. Mid. I haven't got much light. A bit of a mix. So I can use some of the mixed turf. This is where I've just literally flocked something and then tipped it off. So it's actually almost pre blended. we'll crack on with the next one. Right, we left these to dry overnight. So now they're dry, we can just grab some water and just give them a spray. Just 
like that. There's a little bit of flock I saw move, so we just brush off the water. And you get some very thin PVA. And our dropper. And just work our way around and let it soak in. This is the bit that always looks absolutely horrible. soak in and leave that to dry right the horrible stage is gone and the PVA is all dry so this is really nice and solid now they're nice and hard wearing the only downside is because of the type of flock it is it bleeds which is great for blending the colours together these little bits of white plaster in there which were just chips that have got mixed in have coloured up so I'm just going to literally grab a bit of white paint and just touch these in just take some of the green off Put a thin layer on there. There's only the ones that have really gone green. Some of, some of them I'm going to leave. Just so they stick out. They look a bit glowy. So that'll probably do. Don't want to do it too much. So it's just those couple. So we'll have a proper look at these in a minute. We get the camera up, have a chat, and go from there. So, right, there you have it. The descent tiles. So let's have a quick look. So we've got our little tiny bits, these just um, two by ones, two by two. We've got a nice river one, or oh, sea one. The other one's got blue water. Well, the descent tiles actually have the water in blue, so I've stuck with it. And I think the ripple effect worked quite well. That's not nice. These are actually nice, quite nice and firm as well. It's a good thing of using like a Mod Podge mix. It actually hardens the surface as well. The seal in it. And here's our one with the rocks. I'm actually really impressed how well the egg carton has worked. Because it's not broken down fully. I had to break it down a bit so we're mixing it etc. a bit more. It's sort of given this rock texture. So it's sort of something I'm still playing with. So I'll get to the stage, you just rip it up, put it in, and you'll know exactly what sort of texture you're after. I could put less water in it, made it harder, etc. Time, but these are nice and firm, and there's no weight to it, which is great. So if you found this video useful, please like, share, subscribe, and get it out there. If you want to consider supporting the channel, you can always become a patron. It would be greatly appreciated everything I do comes out of my pocket um, if the kids had left me with anything which I don't do very often so that's it for this week I'll start cracking on with some more tiles I want to start doing the buildings but the building tiles for the base were really fine detail so I actually resin printed them as a slice so they're quite thin and I've got to mount them onto backing material and cast those as stamps so they'll be coming to the Facebook store once they're done, there's rollers already over there. There's a couple more I'm still working on. And the bits I haven't added yet. I've obviously done the occult stamps in the past, but I haven't done examples of all of them. So hopefully I'll get them done maybe over the weekend possibly and get them uploaded for you as well. well thank you everyone for watching and I'll catch up with you soon. Have a great week gaming. Cheers.